Hey there, this is Daniel and it's finally time for another tutorial. So today we're going to look at optical flares and um, things like exposure correction things in Blender to recreate uh, those effects that you see with uh, filming in with, with real cameras. So you see we have here some light effects, some glow and what's especially important uh, and the actual reason why I did this test was uh, I wanted to try out this exposure correction thing where the camera behaves as, as if it would, it would uh, adjust to the new bright light source once it gets to view. And that's what I'm going to show you today. It will be done with a node setup and a very simple uh, scene here. Um, maybe one more thing that I want to say at the beginning for those of you who are very advanced with Blender. Um, I will just go over the, the general ideas and techniques of how to achieve this. There might be a few things where you, could, uh, where, where you could improve my setup. Just keep it in mind. If you find out any ways to improve it, let me know. I myself were interested in that. Um, now let's get started with it. So here's my scene. I don't want to bother with um, modeling everything and setting everything up too long. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it in a new scene. Basically what I have here is just the sphere and here separate uh, a few other objects. Those are those have this uh, emission material. Oh, by the way, let's switch to cycles. So uh, this one has just this material and this one is um, just a diffuse white one uh, just to make it look a bit better. Those uh, do emit something, they don't need to be separate objects, let's just connect them now that we are, have the chance. Um, and we also don't need separate layers in case you're wondering about that, so let's make that all in one layer. And make that quickly the active camera. So now everything is set up, we have this quick animation of the camera moving downwards. Let's just make the animation just 50 frames long. And now we are all ready to go. One more thing that you might want to do is add a background, but you don't even need to, if you don't want to. I just uh, used a background because I wanted to make sure that um, this setup won't affect anything besides those um, very bright light sources. So let's do the same thing here. Um, let me quickly pick one of the environment textures that I have. Um, you can go with both the HDRs or a JPEG. Just uh, consider one thing. Uh, if you use one of those HDR files, uh, you have to be aware of the fact that you actually have light emitted from the background, which means that, let's see, this area here could, for example, be brighter than a value of one uh, in the color system, which means that this would be considered a light source, uh, which means that it could also trigger various effects in node system. Um, so actually, let's do that. Let's pick the HDR instead. Um, so that so that you can see that this system also deals with that kind of well. Um, anyways, one last thing to do. Let's increase our samples. I'll uh, choose something around 200 so that we have a good view and I'll make it really small because I don't want to wait too long and here we're going to switch to node editor and here to the image editor because we're going to have to render it to see what our nodes do uh, where is it over here now we we have everything we need um, to begin with go ahead and switch here to the render nodes and activate the nodes by clicking here on use nodes. Now, uh, I, I don't think it's necessary to talk too much about how this works generally uh, because I guess if you're still here at this point, you should have at least some basic knowledge of Blender. Basically, here's an input and here's the, the output. And in between, you can do various effects. Uh, so if you hit render, it renders the scene and gives here, uh, puts the image into here, it goes to there, you can edit it in between and this node sends it back to your final result. Uh, so you see, now it 
did the node compositing however there's nothing there yet so uh, one interesting thing that you can do here is um, go with the mouse to this uh, render view and just click here and drag you can see down here those values those tell you how bright uh, the pixel is where your mask is currently at so right here you see we have uh, RGB values of uh, something f around 6, 8 and 10 which definitely tells us that here is light that's emitted. Our light source is way of scale anyway so blue is even uh, over 500 here um, so that tells us that this is definitely a light source. Everything else is uh, between 0 and 1 uh, since there is no light emitted or no overflow of light or something like that. Um, now that's what we're going to work with exactly. So first thing we want to do is to um, uh, separate our light sources from uh, the rest of the image and we can do that by subtracting um, basically just uh, a value from the image. So I'm going to use this color mix node because it does all RGB uh, channels. So I'm going to use subtract and I'm making sure that it's set to 1, 1 and 1. And here with the factor we can now uh, set the threshold kind of. I found that 20 is kind of good because uh, what we're going to use this for is the uh, light streaks which are going to be horizontally like that and those are only emitted from the very, very brightest parts in the image. Um, you can see we still have very high values, so those are really the very, very brightest parts. Um, also very important, we do not want to clamp anything because we do want to have those high values so that we have, yeah, basically the entire dynamic available for us. Now this next step is kind of um, a walk around. I didn't really find a better way to do it though, especially at this point. If anyone has a better idea how to do it, uh, let me know in the comments. So what we have to do is to make sure that nothing uh, besides is, uh, th that no value is negative. You see that black isn't really black, it's minus something. Um, so we need to cut off everything that is below zero. Um, we do have, um, that node called uh, map value. You know what? Actually, <laughs> sorry, I'm just realizing something. Um, w w wait, I'll quickly explain what this one does. You can basically input a, a value here and an image, and you can scale the the dynamic of the image and give it an offset. So that means that those twenty that we are subtracting here, we could also give the, uh, put that offset here and then set the minimum. So that's what I'm going to do instead. What I would have done, um, what I wanted to do actually was to use that signal uh, and just set the minimum. But since we have the offset here, we can also just instead of this use minus 20 here. And let's try that out quickly and compare the results. And if everything is right, yeah, we get the same result and similar values. Now there's one difference that you might have noticed, and that's exactly what I was talking about, um, is that we don't have color. And since we do want to have our color information uh, still in there, uh, we would need this map value as an, as an RGB node uh, that allows you to do the same thing with all three channels. However, I don't know if there is such a thing. I believe there is not. So what I do instead is separate RGB and combine RGB, which is a way to solve this problem, more or less at least. Um, I don't know if there is an alpha channel, but just to keep it clean, let's uh, have this one there as well. So now we have this entire image in RGB and everything is nice. Now the, the one thing we need to change is to use the minimum set to zero so that there's not a value below that. All right, now this is black and this is very bright. Uh, last thing I think that we need to do is to use um, a blur filter 
and let's set this to fast Gaussian and we're going to use relative because we want to use various uh, render resolutions and so and we want it to always be the same amount of blur so relative is better in this case um, something around I don't know 35 I think that's good um, it looks a bit too much right now but you have to uh, think of it that way since later the exposure will be corrected that will go down as well so that's good so far um, let's wait for the render very quickly next thing we want to do is to combine that back into the original signal so we do that by using a mix node and put the original image first, then the new signal, and just add those. So it looks still quite boring. Um, now let's go and continue with the next step. Uh, here we will add now some glows and um, yeah, blur this entire thing and add light to the, to the scene. Um, We'll start this time with a simple glare node, since I want to add this fog glow, which gives it a really nice effect here, especially since those values are so high, uh, you get a great result here. And there's this threshold, you could play around with that. Uh, if, if this, for example, is a problem for you, you could uh, increase it and have only the, area, the very bright areas affect your scene. So, um, I will choose still one, which should be fine. Uh, by the way, sorry, I um, had to look something up and now the render is gone again. Let's very quickly re-render that. Um, okay, now you see that's our current result which is okay because you, it is really a very bright source, it's not uh, accelerated too much. And later on with exposure control we're going to turn that all down again. Uh, one thing to make sure is again to set the quality to high because you see the difference is very great in this situation. Um, now there is again a similar thing that we did uh, before that we're going to do we want to influence the entire image from these light sources. So let's actually copy this entire setup and integrate it here. And let's see what our result is. So this is what we are filtering this time. Uh, however, we do want to make a few changes here. Uh, I think a better value would be something around um, minus 11, or at least that's what worked for me last time. Um, depending on what you use here, you get more uh, bright spots or less of them. So you can use that to control it. And also you can scale it. And last time I did the test I used uh, the value of 0 0.8 here. So basically by doing that um, you can well, reduce the contrast, I guess. Um, well, it didn't make too much of a difference. It's probably not so um, important in this situation, but um, since I did it in my in my original file, I guess I would uh, mention it here as well. Uh, at least you know that you have the chance to you have the opinion you can choose between those features here. Um, yeah, basically from here on again, um, fast caution filter. This time we're going to use both axes, uh, something around 50 and 50. And um, let's just try adding that to the original thing. And we will be able to then do our corrections. And obviously it's way too bright. Now let's see what we can do to fix that. Um, so I think the easiest way to do it is just basically by reducing the factor value since uh, you see the effect right away uh, when that's higher you have more influence basically and since our values aren't just 0 to 1 uh, they're um, those 
whereas the numbers down there we don't really lose much quality while doing that um, generally because we don't have anything in here that is just using the color space between 0 and 1 we don't have much problems at tweaking colors and such and you see the result is pretty cool and now let's do a test we will go a few frames back to the shot where we don't have any light sources in the view and if, uh, if everything went well we should not get any intense color um, questions here and yeah it just went to the node setup and the image is completely uh, fine now this is the first little look at the light source let's see what happens and it should look really bright and we have a very thin line which is exactly what we want um, you can also reduce the size of the rendering since we used relative a blurring it's not a problem uh, it works a lot faster now and for preview purposes that's good um, and you can yeah go down here and then is the next thing that I want to show you which is now the actual actually cool part you see it's now really too bright and actually cameras would behave the same way if you wouldn't correct um, their settings so here in the render settings there is now this exposure uh, um, value and I will show you here in the viewport what it does so basically it makes everything brighter or, or uh, darker kind of in a specific way um, but, and what you do now is you find out where it's getting bright and at this point exposure will stay at 1 and starting from here the camera re realizes that it's way too bright in, in reality it would happen automatically but you have to animate it uh, we'll set another keyframe but we'll set it to 0 0.02 and you see we have now actually I think that's a bit a bit too, too less let's set it to 0 0.03 now that's just a really small part of the light that we had before and the image is really dark but the, what happens now is that when we render it it's dark but this area here has still lots of light and it's enough light to make it look bright and have a little glow um, since this effect needs more uh, intensity to kick in we don't see the streaks yet but we have enough uh, to see the glow since this one is here with a threshold of 1 and we have this here set to a threshold of something like 11 or so. Um, if we go just a few frames back you see we have an exposure that is still hasn't still reached its uh, goal but it's still uh, rather dark. See we still have the streaks but they're not as intense and while that happens we also see that the background is getting darker and well that results in the scene that I showed you earlier this one here um, so that's kind of the technique that you use um, to sum it up you need to separate uh, the light sources from the background and work with those make sure you do not um, clump the, the values because you, you really want to have that dynamic the blender gives you um, except the negative values I uh, hope you enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next one